encourage you. We are in a very, very challenging time and season in our lives and, 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 and where things are very uncertain. Amen? Uncertain. I don't know where this comes from, but it's a very mix um, on the origin of this statement. But I know uh, one of the forefathers of North America, he became the 16th president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln. And in one of his speech, he had wrote this before, he, he, uh, after he had found it. And it's a very simple statement. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. Amen. Um, even in this time and season, I'm, I'm not saying there are going to be better days ahead or, 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 or not better days. But what I'm saying, this season we are in, this too shall pass. So I want to encourage you. One of the things, because I've come to realize God is the creator of everything and he's the king of the realms. No matter the Bible said, there are many desires in the heart of a man. There's all kind of plans in our heads. And, but the plans of the head come from what you desire in the heart. But the Bible said, among all the things you desire to do, it is the Lord's will. What God wants shall prevail. So if you realize you cannot go against the king and you can't detour his intention, amen, you might as well then either come in alignment or ask him, amen, how to direct your step. And the Bible teaches in Psalms 37, when God is pleased with us, he directs our every steps. So every year I look to the one who created the rams and is responsible for each and every one of us, amen, and I ask him for direction. And the direction he gives me, me for 2021 was this. It's Isaiah 33, amen, verse 2. He said, this is the decree I am giving you for the year 2021, this season and time, amen, as you try to pass through it. And I want to share it with you. The book of Isaiah chapter 33, verse 2 read, Lord, be gracious to us. We long for you, amen. Be our strength every morning and our salvation in time of trouble. More than ever, you need to be longing for the Lord. You need the Lord to be gracious to you. And you need His strength. He is omnipotent. The number one marking and defining character on the human species amen, is finite. It means we are limited. Limited in how much we can do. Limited in how much we know. Limited in how much we can consume. Limited how far we can go. And the number one earmark of God is unlimited. He's infinite. We are finite, he is infinite. There's no end to him. There's a lot of end to us. There's only so, much, so long we can work. There's only so long we can sleep. Everything about us is a limited amount of time. Even our life is only allowed for a limited amount of time. It is the mark of the human expression. Amen? So you need someone, amen, who is willing to be gracious to you, worse if he, better if he has the authority, which is God, who said, amen, he longs to be, amen, gracious to you, in Isaiah 30, 18, amen, and you need his strength to pass through the moments, the situation, the circumstance. I don't know what you're going to go through today, the days ahead, but what I do know, what I do know, you need the strength of the Lord. I start telling, um, some of the congregation not too long ago, I was dealing with a matter a few, a few uh, nights ago, and there's a young man I know for a long time, he's quite strong, and um, he does very well for himself. But in the last little while, he started to come undone, and, he, and he, 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 he had called me and he said, what's going on with me, Bishop? He got, I'm losing control of my mind. I can't trust myself. Like, like I, I'm literally feeling my mind is eluding me. He, got, I, he said, there are many things, he said, get my body. I used to party hard, so my body is falling apart. I get that. But the one area I pride myself is how strong my mind is. And you get this thing that's supposed to be so strong, now it's failing me. It is failing me. So you go like, how, how do you deal with everything? I go, that's very simple. I know I am limited across the board. So I look for the one who is willing to give me his strength, who is unlimited. In everything I will be or do, I look to God to be my strength. If I'm going to have a strong spirit, it's because God allows me to use what? His strength or His spirit. If I'm going to have a strong mind, amen, it's because I, I, uh, God allows me to use His strength. If I'm going to have a strong family, if I'm going to have strong beliefs, strong thoughts, I got the foundation of all I am is rooted in the unlimited. If you root your security, your safety, in the limited, then don't get mad when you start to come undone. 
Because from the beginning, you set yourself what? up. You put your security in something that simply don't have the wear at all to endure that much. You see? There is a limit to your strength. There is a limit to how much you will know. There is a limit to how much you can do. There is a limit to how much you can what? Eat. So you have to decide at some point, do I put my security, my safety, and you have to pass through time. There will be people, there will be things, there will be situations and circumstances. What are you standing on? The Lord Jesus, when he came, put it this way, he said, if you build your life on the sand, meaning he means something that's going to move, he goes, don't get mad when the storm comes. The sand is being true to itself. It moves, sand shifts. He said, but if you put it on a rock, things move around it, but it stays what? He got on the greatest rock. Amen. So I always encourage you both, the church and the unchurch. You have to decide where you're going to, amen, take your stand. On, 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 on what would you position yourself to pass through what I call the happening of life? How are you going to deal with family? How are you going to deal with the season, circumstance, fortune, misfortune? You have to decide sooner or later, this is part of your sovereign will, on what shall I stand to face them. And this is not a solution. None of it going to come my way. <laughs> I will share with you very soon something about that. I don't care if you're Christian or non-Christian. The Lord Jesus put it this way. The rain fall on the Christian and the unchristian. The just and the unjust. I'll put it in, in, in perspective now. Bad things are going to happen to Christian and non-Christian. Good things are going to happen to Christian and non-Christian. Healthy things are going to happen to Christian and Non-Christian. Fortune going to come to Christian and? Christian. It's the same. This world is like a big umbrella, like a big pavilion. And we all at different times is moving under it or through it. Amen? The question is, it's not if it's going to happen. The Lord Jesus put it this way. He said, these things, he goes, is certain to come once you're on the human realms. He said, trials. He said you are guaranteed to go through trials. It's getting more interesting. He said you are guaranteed to be tempted to secure yourself to deal with life on the limited instead of the what? The unlimited. He said, he said this thing is certain. You are going to be tempted. You are going to be trying to see. You know, you know we have a saying, do you work your salt? Meaning like, have you prepared well? We see this in sports. It's one thing for you to go, I'm preparing for the Olympic, I'm preparing to swim, I'm preparing to run, I'm preparing for my football game. But you haven't been tested. How do you know your preparation is good? To test your preparation, you have to be what? Try. You have to be tempted. And this is, temptation typically falls in two categories. Are you prepared or what? Unprepared. Do you want to take the chances and go, I won't prepare. Things might not happen. Are you willing to prepare Amen. if the test don't come even better? Even though I guarantee it always come. And the last one he said, there's going to be tribulation. Which means sometimes you go from test to what? Test. Consecutive kind of test. You just come out of one season of being test. You're hoping for a season or a period to be healed, to rest. And a new season of testing is what? Upon you. The Bible refers to that as tribulation. Meaning it seems like it's not what? Ending. From one season of challenge to a? Nothing. So the Lord Jesus said, long as you are a human and, 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 and this hurt remain, you can guarantee those things. So you either believe he's lying and you don't prepare, or you decide to believe that, and, and if, you, if you have lived a little bit, you know he's not lying. Each one of us, I don't care if you try to live the best, most peaceful life, some things are going to what? Happen to you. It's supposed to. It's called a process event. The question is, how did you prepare yourself to pass through this time? How did you prepare yourself to pass through the seasons ahead of you? Amen? And the Bible tells us, if we are preparing God, you will pass through this season. You won't escape it, but it won't destroy it. God said, I have strengthened you to deal with difficulty. I love, I love, there's a, um, in the book of 2 Corinthians, let me share something quickly with you. Second Corinthians, God was speaking to, the, or the church was testifying as they passed through their season of trials and tribulation and testing. Second Corinthians chapter 4, 7 through 9. And we're going to get into the word process through time. Second Corinthians chapter 4, 
verse 7 through 9. The Bible reads, However, we possess, this is what happens when you're regenerated, it means you have been reformatted, re reset up, restructured to deal with life. You know, when I was a kid, there's a strange gospel out there that you are being reset up and reformat not to deal with life to go to heaven. You have to go to heaven. No, it's true. You are being reformat to prepare for heaven. You are being reformat, amen, to able to execute, practice the reformatting. The Bible said it in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. God is completing what he started, amen, to make sure you are perfected for the day of Jesus. Amen. When, when a spermatozoa enter a womb, it is begin the process before we will see the baby. It needs nine months of processing before the baby is what? Completely formed. Amen. The scripture said, however, we possess this precious treasure, the divine light of the gospel in fragile human. So God re referred to the human body as what? Fragile. It's not strong. But you got something inside, the divine light, that is what? Extraordinary. It's not your body is extraordinary. Uh -huh. Your body gets hurt so easy. It gets cold. It gets hot. It's weak. It gets sick. That's not where the power is. You're wasting your time if you're putting all your, you know, this morning we actualize certain things, meaning we try to be fully aware of it. And the Bible, the Bible uh, this morning as mom was leading us through, it's got... Do not uh, fall under the will of the body, meaning the temperature or the control of the body. The body has a will, a gauge, and you can attune your life or set your life according to what? The body. So the Bible said, you know, do not fall under the will of the flesh, meaning do not let your life be directed by the weakest element of you. The weakest element of you is your body. So you know, don't let your soul fall under the body, what? Control. If not, you, you are set it at the lowest gauge the barometer of how you live your life is at the lowest setting. setting. Minimum, if you're going to do it, set it at the soul. It still falls below the glory. You need to set it at the spirit. The Bible said, not to the will of the flesh or the will of man. Amen? Those that are free, freedom of expression. But set it to the will of what? God, the highest standard. So the scripture went on to say, as he said, in this frail human vessel of hurt, Amen? That the grandeur and excellence, the greatness of the power may be shown to be from God and not from ourselves. God said, I've put this light in this vessel. I don't want you to confuse tremendous real power with weakened vessel. You see, if your body was as powerful as your spirit, you will confuse and take the power from, from your body. So God didn't want to confuse you. See, he said, I am putting the power in something that's weak, that you can make a distinction. You should learn to make a quick distinction that a body is not strong enough. Based on how easy certain things can happen to it. Amen? You work just a little too much and it gets you tired. Verse 8 said, Now look what it can pass you. We are edged in, pressed on every side, troubled and oppressed in every way, but not, amen, cramped or crushed. The force doesn't get crushed even though it, trouble is everywhere. Amen? We suffer embarrassment and are perplexed and unable to find a way out but not driven to despair. So though they go through all this trouble, the inner man what? Holes. So if you set, I'm going to mean you, you see, the, the you is the personality, it's your soul. There's the weak body, there's a power in it, and then there's the soul. What makes each one of us unique? The second thumbprint, it's your soul. So the you is your soul. So if the soul sets itself on the lowest gauge, the barometer of the body, you'll find the soul will be very weak. And when it passes through the trial, the temptation, and tribulation, you'll collapse. If you set it in the soul, you see, you'll find it has, it has a limit to the power. You see? But if you set it to the spirit, the Bible says you have this great power. Amen? Then you'll find you still have to deal with life. But you'll have power the way this young man can hold his nephew with one hand. And you're like, God, you don't matter, you're strong, I'm stronger. <laughs> Amen? Mm -hmm. Verse 10, the last verse I want to read for you. Amen? Always carried about in the body, amen, the liability and exposure to the same put into death that the Lord Jesus suffered. So understand this, if not, Jesus couldn't die, they couldn't kill him. 
When Jesus came in the body, though he has this exceptional power, he's God himself, the Son of God, and he can raise the dead and do everything. For him to have the human experience, he has to be placed in the same weakening what? Body. If not, he cannot be hurt. Number one, for him to save us and for him to sympathize with us, he has to go the same weakened body that you are in. I was in an exact one. Weakened body. The same weakened vessel that humans are in, for him to say that he know our experience, he also has to come in the same weakened one. Body. So the Bible said the same way how his body was liable, amen, to death, verse 10, always carried about in the body the liability and exposure. You're always exposed once you're in that weaker body. To the same put into death that the Lord Jesus suffered. Amen. And the Bible said, so that the resurrection life of Jesus, amen, also may be shown forth by and in our bodies. It's a repetition. Of it. Correct. It's the same thing. So got the same thing how human beings experience life, but Jesus was still able to show the resurrection life. Amen. We are to do the same. So I'll give you an example. Each one of us have to take a stand, meaning, how am I going to face life? What is life? Family, God, situation, belief, thoughts, things, children, circumstance, con all of this is life. Life is a conglomeration of a series of events. Moments, people, things, circumstance. So it's just like a buffet. There's a series of things. Here is the question though. Where are you going to face it from? Or what are you going to deal with it with? You can use your education in the soul. It, it, it can help. You can use the weakening body. It's going to betray you. Amen. Even your education, I'm telling you, because the problem, education is data. But the brain, the mind is what? It's a container. Can the container hold? Education is education, just data, it's just information. But the brain is what? Part of it, it's a container. I need the container to what? Hold. What was happening to what's happened to my friend? He still has the data, but the container is what? It's coming undone. It's unraveling. You go, it's not holding. I need it to stay together, but you got a container is dissolving. Is it? Or you can do what the Lord said and what I have learned. Learn to take your position. Just because you learn about the body or you learn about your mind or your emotion and your will and your personality, learn about the spirit. Learn about the unlimited. And then you start to use that to face life in whatsoever way it shows up. People think circumstances are oh, a component of life. For the time or the duration you will be allowed, take a stand on the spirit. Just like all your Lord, we, 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 today we're doing a christening for Christian, and um, we, we love watching him. He's learning to walk and do different things. But he has to learn to do all this. He has to learn how to creep. He has to learn how to walk. He has to learn how to crawl. How do you think you harness the spirit? You learn about it. First you identify. You, you become familiar. Then you learn its ability, its range. Amen? And you learn to filter that through the soul the same way you learn the body. So as life comes, you show life that. And what you will find, the happening of life cannot crush it. In fact, the happening of life comes at such a volume to force you to get past the body and the soul. Meaning, it's stronger than your body, intentionally. God is trying to get you to look what? Somewhere else for a solution. But equally, notice as you're reading, though they're going through all these things, they're not being destroyed. Because I don't care what you're going through. We're going to talk a little bit about this. This too shall what? Pass. You see, one of the unfortunate things, some of, some of us have some poor mindset. You think the things that are happening, you know, it is just happening to you that you're unlucky, you're unfortunate, these things are just happening to you. No, your, 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 your framing is wrong. It is happening for you. It is happening to point you to something else. For you to get better equipped, for you to get more familiar, for you to become more fluent. You understand? For you to learn how to even integrate and initiate the situation, how to pass through, maneuver. It is trying to bring you to the highest level of your maneuvering ability, which is in your spirit. The closest thing you have to that is the soul. The soul is quite dynamic. It has a will, and based on how well you have trained the will, the will can be quite strong. You have a unique personality, how you go about things. Amen. You have a mind, the ability to understand things. Amen. And to learn things. The mind can learn and you can comprehend. Amen. The will allows you to make choice. You have feelings that allows you to experience what you're learning and what you're understanding. But yet it is limited. Yet among all these variations of life, God gives you a spirit, one that is constant. 
But if you don't know it, I pray God have mercy on you that you have to pass through these things. Whatsoever way it will come. Nobody can save you. Not mom, not dad. Nobody can save you is God. But who are you going to face it with? Amen? It's what we, the church, are supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be constantly trying to encourage you to come to know the Spirit. We can't save you from life, but we can prepare you what? For life. This is the church. To get you regenerated, get that branch of power released in you, get you familiar, and then we thrust you into life. We go, okay, life is coming, but I think you're ready. I think you'll be okay. Just like Jesus had to pass through in the weakened body, but in the power of the Spirit, so will you. Amen. Today, let's, I want to wrap up a series I started last week called Process Through Time. Each one of us, time is a canal. And each one of us, when a baby is born, he is placed, he or she, in the canal of time. And he or she will go through a series of processes. You'll order something from Amazon or some way, and you have to wait till it gets through the processing. It's called a processing event. A baby has to go through a stage where you'll process being a baby, being an adolescent, being a teenager, being a man, being a woman, etc. Being married, being a child. All of it are processes in the time span of time or the canal or the channel of time. So each of us are being processed through time. Now I want to show you, we're gonna, I'm gonna, last week I started this message and I want to quickly go back to Ecclesiastic chapter 3 verse 15. Amen. Just to give us a quick little recap. And then we're going to go straight into the word. I won't spend a lot of time there. Ecclesiastic chapter 3. Ecclesiastic is after Proverbs. So you got Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastic. It's the book of sarcasm on man. That man is in this unique game. He uses himself wrong for the most part. And life is handling him. The very situations that have been set up to help him seems to be maneuvering him. So the, the book of Ecclesiastic is like the laugh of man. Look at this PC God has created, put in the game that should be helping him, but the game handle it, out many with it. So it's the book of or psychar, you know, being psychism where you're kind of like going, this is a joke of man, he's a laugh. Mm. Not good from the man's side. <laughs> Verse 15 reads, chapter 3, Ecclesiastic chapter 3, Last week we read from 1 through 15. I'm not going to read all of that. That every day is a time. Do all I get from verse 1 said, Amen. To everything there is a season. Everything has a time. There's a time to be a child and a time not to be a child. There's a time to be a teenager and a time not to be a teenager. There's a time to be a young woman and a time not to be. There's a time to be a mother and a time to be a grandmother. Time to be a grandfather. There's a time for everything. Meaning, each one of us will be granted a period of time for you to get this unique experience according, amen, to what your soul needs and what God is trying to do. Amen? Now I want to show you something. Verse 15 is very beautiful. The Bible reading verse 15. That which is now, there's a, there's a process called the now. Right now, there, there's certain things happening. You can be aware of it or not aware of it. What you're supposed to be, as human beings, we're supposed to be very attuned to the what? The now. One of the reasons most of us can't maneuver our life, you're in the past or you're in what? The future. You're missing the no. now. And the only thing you can affect, and even your future that you can affect, can only take place in where? No. The now. No. The decision you make now will be proper reaction to what's happening and what prepare you for your future. future. So there's only one place you can really initiate change or affect. It's in the now. You can't initiate change in the future because it hasn't what? Come yet. And you can't initiate change in the past because it's gone. So you only have one place of power. Or let, to be, let me say it more accurately. You have one place of influence. There, there, there are three like breadth or three, three areas happening. There's the past, the present, and the present. But it's only one of them you have influence on. The only reason you have influence on the one to come is based on what you do what? No. Now. The now is the one you should be working in that you want to be very attuned, aware of, in, to, in touch with. The now. What's going on right now? What do I need to do? Because this will dictate what's the one. Come. So the Bible teaches us in verse 15 of chapter 3. Amen. That which is now has been. It said the things that are happening now have already what? 
being before. It's just you are passing through it now. Mm -hmm. Amen. We got a wonderful family here. When you guys are going through this, your mom and dad went through it with you a long time ago. It's new to you, not to them. Amen. What is now has been before. A -a Amen. It's one of the reasons they just look at you and you go, Mom, Dad, this, I, I can't take this. They just go, and this too shall pass. <laughs> Amen. It's what we call experience. Amen. So they say, that which is now has been. And that which is to be already has what? Been. It said the thing that is coming has already what? Been. Now you'll see what's happening in this whole process as the scripture continues. And God seek that which has passed, amen, by so that history repeats itself. So everything is just rinse and repeat. The past is becoming the future, and the now already was the past. It's just you are going through it now. The Bible said to God in everything is rest. In truth, nothing, Solomon said this, he said nothing new under the sun. It's just you discover it or you become aware of it. But it's the same past comes into what? The now, and what is coming was. Mm -hmm. You see, it's like everything just turning at a different time, and just you are reaching it based on which age or awareness you are in. You see, so you have to realize this process. You see, it's a process through time. I am going through, or I'm going to experience a series of things. Hopefully, I'm aware of it because I could be fully unconscious. Amen. Because you only can be aware of it. Remember what I said. Assuming you are awake to the. Now, whether you are awake to, to the now or not, you are going to pass through the process, but not necessarily you're going to be aware. You definitely will have influence or not conscious influence. To have conscious influence, I know I'm in the now. And I know this one gives me great encouragement. What I'm experiencing now was. So if I have any kind of, you know, work my salt a little bit, I can do a little bit of research to see how did they deal with this now I'm dealing with in the past, which can get me what? Prepared. Prepare. If you know most um, lawyers and different things when they write a piece, when they're preparing, they, they look at past case to say, what? It's called precedent. I need to get experience or draw, amen, some theory, draw some substance. How did they deal with this case before? And from there, I have a setup how to go about, how to navigate these waters. You see? The, the, the past leaves us what? Clues. How to deal with the now, which should teach us how to prepare for what? The future. The past, is it, is it, is it, is it, God used history amen, to teach you how to get ready for the now and teach you the now how to get ready for what? The future. It's why people that are good at history, they're typically very good at what? Now. Those are not, that don't understand how people live before or how did they deal with circumstance, they're terrible at dealing with the now. And when you're terrible at dealing with the now, you don't have to worry about your future. I can, I can predict it for you. Some of you go to fortune teller, you know, or, or um, mediums to tell you what's going to happen with your future. I just need to see your past and I can tell it to you. Based on how you understand your past, tell me what you're going to do now. And what you're doing now, I can predict your what? Your future. It's not complicated. It's not complicated. Because if we are both passing through the same time, it's just different seasons, you might be ahead of me or I'm behind you. If I understand what happened here and I make the adjustment here, I know what's going to happen here. Does this make sense? Amen? Amen. I am speaking simply this morning from the perspective Processing through time. Being processed through time. Time is the channel or the canal that all human beings are going to be processed through. Amen? Each one of us is granted a certain amount of time to be processed. Now we learned something wonderful too. We had looked at 2 Corinthians. I won't go there today. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2. And God, God is so merciful and good to us. You know we are terrible at the now. We're terrible in the process even. So he says, okay, I send Jesus to atone for you. In the weak body, yes, I give you an extraordinary spirit, which I give the church. But he goes, I'm not going to leave you as an offering. 
I'm not going to leave you, you know, like Christian, just a baby, that though you're in the now, you don't have a way of, 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 of you're not, bottom line, you're growing up, you're not developing up. So he said, I'm going to give you paraclesis, the Holy Spirit. And he goes, the reason he knows the whole process, you just need to listen to him. He said, he said, and he will teach you how to prepare for the now based on the past and to get ready for the future. He's called Pericles, the one who is alongside you. He said he will help you. He knows, God knew you're regenerated, but you're still a baby, meaning you're unfamiliar. What makes us a baby? Is, is a baby have all this potential in it? No, it's there. Just like a seed. When you put a seed in the ground, it's just a seed. But in this seed, there's a tree. And in this tree, there are fruits. And when these fruits drop and create more seeds, it creates an orchard. It's all in the seed. It's all in the seed. It's like a PDF file. It's all there. You just need time to what? Open. The baby has all the potential, but you need to go through a process of release and developing, then you can. But when he's a baby, he's unaware of all these things. So God knew, though we are in the church, you're regenerated, you're still unaware, you're unprepared, you're not familiar enough. So he said, I'm going to give you my Holy Spirit, the fully aware spirit. And this job, the Bible said, is to help you, to comfort you. When you feel like I can't go on, it will show you, you could. Amen? And, and he will advocate, he will fight for you. He will fight to get you through the process of the process he felt. And the Bible teaches in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, the Bible said, God said, now is the time of favor. Now is the time. I want to encourage both the church. Actually, let, let's go to that chapter quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I just kind of want to put some emphasis on one thing for you. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. I want you to know this verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, I'm going to read. For he says, 